How do you do, everybody? I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ronald Reagan. A few months ago, I was a sports announcer on a radio station in Des Moines, Iowa. And one day, I ran into one of these movie talent scouts. I think I caught him off guard because the next thing I knew, I was taking a screen test for Warner Brothers in Hollywood. I guess it was okay. At least I liked Hollywood. So here I am. Hi, Matt Welch for Reason TV. I'm here in Las Vegas at Freedom Fest, and I'm joined by Mark Elliott, author of Reagan, The Hollywood Years, who's giving a presentation uh, here at Freedom Fest. So, I grew up in California, know Re Reagan a little bit. The basic caricature is that he was a B, maybe C actor who starred in a lot of chimp movies. Uh, how accurate is that, uh, that kind of uh, basic take on it? Semi-accurate, yeah. Uh, you know, he, he gets a big rap for a bedtime for Bonzo. Everybody, Johnny Carson lived off of that uh, film. But actually, it wasn't that bad a movie, if you ever saw it. Uh, Cary Grant did one a year earlier called uh, Monkey Business, which didn't hurt Cary Grant's <laughs> career, and let's not forget King Kong. So uh, the monkey movies had their place. Clint Eastwood did uh, yeah. a couple of orangutan films. But reason, uh, the reason Reagan got the rap was because he then went into politics. And uh, it was an easy target uh, for the opposition to say, this is a guy who makes movies with monkeys. So the bedtime thing uh, stayed with him. One of the problems for Reagan at that time was that he couldn't get a job. Um, he went into the army, he drafted into the army, I think in 1941, right after Pearl Harbor, but didn't go and see action. He, he made propaganda movies for Warner Brothers which didn't help anybody. I mean, they were good movies. They uh, kept him working, kept food on the table. But when the war ended and all the soldiers came back who had been movie stars, they, they found themselves out of work because they were too old. They were considered 30s era movie actors. Because he couldn't get a job, he became increasingly interested in the political side of Hollywood. Politics had always interested him. Now he started off as a standard issue FDR liberal, is that? Uh, yeah, he was a FDR liberal because it was depression uh, years. He grew up in the depression years um, and uh, he, he got a job in the Midwest, as you know, in Chicago, outside of Chicago, and uh, he got a job as a sportscaster, uh, which was a big deal in those days. He went to California for spring training with the Chicago Cubs and uh, wound up meeting a girl at the Roosevelt Hotel. She said, eh, you take off those glasses. You're not that ugly, and uh, maybe I could uh, talk to somebody and get you a job as, a, as an extra or something. The girl in that last scene is June Travis, a nice girl. As I said before, I think I'm going to like Hollywood. Yeah, he was smitten by Hollywood, like everybody was. Um, and he became a utility man. You know, there's a very famous story, uh, retold a, diff a thousand different ways, but the, the truth of it is that um, when Jack Warner, uh, the uh, head of Warner Brothers, one of the founding brothers, heard that Ronald Reagan was running for governor. He said, Reagan for governor? No, no, that, that's wrong. Errol Flynn for governor. Reagan for best friend. <laughs> and and that, <laughs> that, I think, tells you uh, how they thought of Reagan. I mean, he was, he was pigeonholed as the best friend, as the pal, as the wholesome, uh, not especially hot, uh, a good kid from the Midwest um, who filled in as the buddy for all these rough and ready uh, hot actors like Flynn, those kind of guys. But it, it was in politics in Hollywood that he really found uh, his calling. When the mob moved into Hollywood, uh, uh, Al Capone sent his number one guy, Willie Byoff, to infiltrate Yahtzee, take it over, and then go to the studios and say, look, you don't want to strike this year? Pay up and we'll keep uh, everybody working. And that's the way Hollywood operated. Reagan was scheduled to give a big speech at the Hollywood Legion. The night before, he got a phone call saying, if you step out of your house, we're gonna throw acid in your face. Reagan, being Reagan, shot over to Warner Brothers 
uh, went into Jack Warner and said, w w what should I do? Warner opened up a drawer, took out a gun, said, here, carry this. You know, these, these Hollywood guys, uh, they, they didn't know where to draw the line between reality and who even knows if the gun worked or something. But Reagan took it, strapped it on, you know, six gun, and he felt that he was protected because uh, if these guys were going to come after him, he shoot him. Two years later, Reagan is the president of the Screen Actors Guild. Far more important than uh, Bedtime for Bonzo. <laughs> and um, all these films that were lying around pre-48 uh, had no lives. They were gathering dust in uh, warehouses and deteriorating. You could sell these to television and make a fortune because television eats programming and eats content. So all these local stations, 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night, baseball game, rain out, and they show a film. Make a fortune licensing the movies. And because the original contracts were done as work for hire, these actors got paid salaries, the studios owned the film. So when they sold these movies, the Screen Actors Guild said, wait a minute, you're making money on these movies over and over again, and our actors aren't making anything. We want a piece of the action. So that turned into the first strike that SAG ever pulled on Hollywood. Again, aimed at Warner Brothers, always the big target. And it was Reagan who came in and uh, settled the strike by saying, all right, we'll draw the line at 1948. Pre-1948, actors don't get paid because their original contract was work for hire. But after 1948, actors have to get residuals. And in order to sell that, he made um, all the, the producers put up, I think it was a $4 million seed fund for an actor's pension. In 1950, actors like Mickey Rooney and even Bob Hope, who was a great friend of Reagan, were outraged by this. Bob Hope said, every time I turn on the television, I'm seeing myself uh, entertaining people, and I'm not making a dime. It's worse than horrible, because a zombie has no will of his own. You see them sometimes, walking around blindly with dead eyes, following orders, not knowing what they do, not caring. You mean like Democrats? All the actors coming up now get residuals, and have strong, one of the strongest pension packages of any union in any industry. So at the time, Reagan was reviled by everybody for this deal he made. But in retrospect, the deal actually was great for Hollywood, great for the actors, great for the industry, saved all these movies from oblivion, and makes Reagan look, although he wasn't the only one involved in the deal. He was, SAG had a lot of important people. He was the one who understood how to make this work, how to keep peace, how to keep people together. Negotiators for both sides expressed satisfaction with the contract and the belief that it's fair and equitable and will lead to stable labor management relations. Barry Goldwater's uh, campaigning for the president, falling off the platform drunk at the end of every speech, and they know he's not going anywhere. So they hold an informal meeting at uh, Reagan's house uh, of uh, people like Annenberg and, and uh, all, all the biggies that were his friend, the big Republicans up in Beverly Hills. And they're sitting around saying, who can we get to help Barry Goldwater's image? And they're sitting around and they see Reagan smiling at the end of the table, shaking his head. And uh, they say, wait a minute. And that's where my book ends. So everything that follows that wait a minute you know, you know, he, he becomes governor two years after uh, Goldwater loses, 12 years later he's president and um, floats into history as this, uh, this great uh, leader. And it really all comes out of his inability to get work as an actor, his failed career as an actor that leads him to his true calling. Well, judging from the applause, I take it that you are a performer? Uh, <laughs> performer.